Okay, so here we're going to talk about steering axis inclination or SAI, included angle and camber adjustments. Now, one of the things you're going to find when you do specifications and you look at specifications for a vehicle, most of the time it'll give you camber caster toe and thrust angle. So again, thrust angle is the, the rear wheels making sure they're pointing straight. If your rear isn't pointing straight, there's really not much point doing the front because you're not going to you're not going to be able to compensate for the rear trying to steer the vehicle. So rear has to be straight first all the time, all the time. So now we get into the front camber adjustment, and what you're going to find is in a in a in a computer when you're actually doing the alignment, the computer will give you the readings for included angle and steering axis inclination. Now, remember included angle is your steering axis inclination plus your camber. And, and what happens here is you can use these angles, the SAI and the included angle, you can use those angles to determine if something's going wrong in your vehicle and if there's something bent, if there's a bent component. And the way that kind of works is when you have an SLA suspension like this, so this is the short long arm suspension, dual wishbone suspension, um, you know, dual A-frame, there's, there's lots of different names for it. So the SLA suspension, essentially most of the adjustments for these styles take place at the upper control arm. If the upper control arm is where the adjustments take place, now from that point you can move the upper control arm inwards or outwards. And when you move the upper control arm inwards or outwards, you're going to be able to adjust the steering axis inclination. And while you adjust the steering axis inclination, it'll move that upper ball joint inwards or outwards which will also cause the spindle to rotate upwards or downwards, changing the camber. So, so essentially, you start moving that upper control arm in order to adjust the camber. But because you're moving the camber and the SAI, if you move the camber more positive, then the SAI will also change. And the SAI will go more negative. But the interesting part here is your included angle should never change because it's the difference, again, between the SAI and the camber, which means your included angle should remain identical when you're dealing with an SLA suspension. So when you're doing the diagnosis and you're looking at some of these numbers, if your included angle is considerably different side to side, then you have to start looking for some damage in certain areas. Opposingly, if you have a strut suspension like the one drawn on the right hand side here, many times the adjustment for a strut suspension, whoa, I'm causing the page to jump a bit there, is in that location there where the strut will mount to the spindle, which means if we're adjusting where the strut mounts to the spindle, you're going to be able to adjust the camber angle and the included angle will then also change because this point here through to this point here for the SAI does not change at all. So regardless of where you set the camber, your SAI stays the same in the strut suspension, assuming again that that adjustment takes place right there. If the adjustment takes place at the top of the strut, then it's treated the same as this style here. So with that information, We should be able to look at some specifications and determine 
what's going on inside this vehicle. So in a case like this, we have an SLA suspension, the short long arm suspension. And remember with a short long arm suspension, the included angle should always remain the same. And in this case, if we We straightened this tire out and we got that camber. We got that camber within specifications and uh, we raised it up a whole bunch. Let's say we're going to compensate for road crown and the whole works and we're going to set that side to positive 0.75 degrees, which means we have an increase from negative 0.75 to positive 0.75 we have an increase, we've moved this tire out by a total, total of 1.5 degrees to get it to that 0.75 degrees camber. And again, when you change it, you're also going to be lowering the SAI, which means that the SAI would change by 1.5 degrees, which brings the SAI to five degrees on the left hand side. But again, your included angle doesn't change because you're changing both the camber and the SAI at the same time. Now, seeing that that's the problem, the only, the only answer here is that you have something bent because when we change it, when we change it, the SAI should be the same side to side. And when you look at the specs, how they are now, with this camber being excessively negative, if you adjust for, if you adjust for that number, then you're going to be knocking your SAI way, way, way out. So essentially, you should look at this right off the bat and think, okay, well, if my SAI is the same on both sides, that means my position of the ball joints are both at 6.5 degrees. So that should tell you right off the bat that the ball joints are positioned correctly. But the included angle, the included angle is off by 1.25 degrees, or just about the same amount that, oh, I shouldn't have erased that one, but that's all right, just about the same amount that the camber is off, which tells me if the camber is too far in there, but my SAI is correct, I can make the assumption that the spindle here has been bent up. Spindle has been bent up, causing that wheel to sit more in, causing the more negative camber. And the repair on this one would not be an alignment adjustment. It would be a correction for the spindle.